Welcome everyone to the Proven Knowledge Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Church. I'm a music producer from Northeast Ohio. I began this weekly interview series to give you different perspectives from artists, producers, engineers, and other individuals in the music industry. In each episode, we touch on not only what has helped the person succeed, but we also touch on what has shaped them into the person that they are today. I hope you're able to gain some real proven knowledge from the show and that it helps elevate you on your own journey to success as well. Let's get into it. Welcome everyone to episode 190 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. Today I welcome a singer, songwriter, producer. Her name is Ava Willis. I've been connected with Ava since around 2020. We've had some discussions in the past. I've shared some of her music to the Spotify playlists, um, and we finally got her on the show this week. Very great discussion with Ava about her many many twists and turns on the road of her journey so far in music. Um, She talked about, you know, moving all over the country at one point, um, eventually landing in Nashville, where she has been in college studying audio engineering and music production. Uh, She talked about, you know, the challenges that she had to overcome during that initial time of moving to Nashville. Also, the people that she's met along the way. Um, She also talked about starting a talent agency with a fellow collaborator and what she's going to be doing in that endeavor and what that's meant to her. She also discussed what she has in store for this year in 2024. A lot of music, a lot of cool things planned. And I think my favorite part of this episode was just her messages to other artists around the world. You know, to just keep going, uh, trust the process. You know, everybody thinks this is a straight line to be able to do, you know, anything in music, anything in the art world, but it's definitely not. There's a lot of twists and turns along the way. And I think Ava's journey is no different. And I'm, you know, very happy that she shared it all with us today. So without further ado, let's get into this one. All right. Well, welcome everyone to episode 190 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. Today we have another incredible singer-songwriter to kick off the month of February. Everyone, please welcome Ava Willis to the show. How are you doing today? Hi, everybody. I'm doing really, really well. Thank you so much for having me. Mm, absolutely. And like I said, you know, I feel like we've been connected at least for like two or three years at this point. We've talked about this before. Uh, and I know, yeah, I know yeah. in music in general, it's all about timing. And it's finally the right time to... You know, get you on here and I'm glad to have you here today so you know to start off every episode we have the guests give some background as far as how you got into music um, how long you've been doing it just some basic info for those that might not know you and what you do yeah thank you so I I started creating beats um, just producing music um, in 2012 and I would just sing covers things like that very small things like I started professionally then when I was younger I would sing um you know at beauty pageants like little talent um events as a child and it kind of just developed into more of a, a passion and you know I've auditioned for a couple of tv shows and you know just staying active in creating and singing music and making music and so um in 2017 I decided to you know, put my music out officially on iTunes and I started writing my own music and getting it produced and putting it out. And, um, I just really loved the whole creation process. So I just decided to, uh, go to school for audio engineering. So that way I can learn a little bit more in depth on producing beats. Um, and then also just being in Nashville right now, being in a place that there's a lot of other creative so I could just develop a little bit more into um, a creator and a producer um, and just continue continue on mm-hmm. down this road in the industry um, and that's a little bit about my background yeah that's awesome so that's been probably what that's 2012 that's like going on 12 years now of doing it yeah. like that so and I didn't know you got started in production specifically so that's pretty cool uh, I, I believe I, I knew that a little bit but I didn't know how long you've been doing it so that's super awesome too and uh it's you are you originally from the tampa area then and you moved to nashville for school like how did that work then yeah so i moved around a little bit i was born in staten island new york and then i lived in delaware for a lot of my 
childhood, um, kind of in a country area, a lot of property, mm-hmm. um, and a small farm. And when I moved to Tampa, Florida, um, that was when I, you know, did a little bit more with music. Um, I got Pro Tools and I started singing in a mic very young and I got really into like um, making beats and things like that on like free softwares online. Um, and I feel like moving to Tampa was really um, essential for me to start developing my passion. And um, I moved around afterwards as an adult. I joined the military and I served for a couple of years and I was stationed in San Diego, California. And so I was about, you know, two hours from LA, which is a really good music scene. And mm-hmm. so I moved back from uh, San Diego after living there for a couple of years back to Tampa. And then um, I went to college for a complete different uh, field for um, personal training. And um, it just really wasn't where my heart was at. And I just knew like deep down that I didn't want music to be a plan B for me. And so I just dove in at 25, went all in and moved to Nashville, not knowing anyone there. And I just enrolled in um, a college that offered an audio engineering program. And I really just um, went for it. So that's how Mm -hmm. I ended up here. Um, You know, and I just didn't want to wait anymore to get going and follow my dreams and yeah really roll the dice and yeah it's it's really paying off the passion was always there it was really just like taking the next step into mm-hmm. you know developing something yeah um into something that you can do like for a career mm-hmm. and instead of like thing that i was doing on the weekends and stuff in tampa like singing gigs things like that and um a lot of other stuff in the music industry too that i was doing but now I have a lot more experience, which is what I was looking for in Nashville. But yeah, so that's how I ended up all over the place pretty much. Yeah. It's crazy how, you know, one thing can lead to another and then you end up kind of where exactly where you're supposed to be after all that. Um, and I think stories like yours are the ones that don't really get told a lot because I think a lot of people, especially if they're trying to do music or have a career, they want to just skip the steps or just immediately have success right away. But it can take years you know, to even get to a point where it looks like you can do something in the field. Um, so I think for you, it's kind of been that way where you had to go do other things, see what you actually wanted to do, and then kind of shift paths a little bit to get to where you are now. Um, so congratulations yeah. on that, because I think that's super awesome. And I know it's probably ever evolving too, but to look back on your journey has to be super fulfilling. So thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's been, it's been something that, you know, it took doing a lot of other jobs and, you know, things that weren't really like a forever thing, but I still took, you know, my 100% energy into everything I do and I made the most out of every situation until I got to a point where I was able to make a move knowing that, you know, while I was trying out different fields, I did sales you know, I did the, the food industry, um, a lot of different other random industries that weren't music industry, um, to know so this is something worth, you know, moving across, you know, moving into the middle of the country for, because it was just something that was always there for me and I really loved it. And so it, it made the transition easier because I knew that deep down I had my passion to kind of, you know, direct me you know Mm. and I could always that you know that you know at least I would be happy like doing what I'm doing Mm. Um, and it's a lot harder to give it up when you have that love for it I think too unlike anything else where it's like if it doesn't pan out you're on to the next thing because you don't really care about it as much so I, I definitely see where you're coming from on that as well and let's take it to you know when you got to Nashville you started you know pursuing this what do you think was a big challenge during that time, especially when you first got there, was it trying to make connections or just trying to find like what you were going to pursue uh, at first or what, what do you think was something you had to overcome to get to kind of where you are now? I think one of the biggest things I had to overcome was realizing that um, you really have to know yourself and know what sets you apart from other people. Like what value do you bring to the table? Because there's so many people here in Nashville 
just as amazing and just as talented that have the same passion and dream as you. And, um, you know, there is room for everyone to eat at the table, but sometimes being in a place where there's so many people that are also, you know, trying to pursue their dreams, you know, it's very humbling because then you're like, wow, I'm one of many people with the same passion and same dream. And it, it kind of tears you down a little bit because you feel like you're a drop in the ocean, but then it also builds you up. Because then you're like, it makes you want to work even harder and it makes you want to really focus on yourself and make sure that your brand is very solid and, you know, that you're being the best person you can be. Um, and that's what people really gravitate towards is just good energy, you know, a hardworking person who, you know, has been at it for a while and, you know, it's a forever thing. You know, there's a lot of people who kind of just jump from things and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I think something to be said about somebody who's been in the mud working for years and years and it's a slow burn, you know, and we all love to just blow up overnight, but you know, even the people who have seemed to just blow up overnight, even they had this, you know, mustard seed that just grew, you know? Yeah. And it made me really like just focus on myself and making sure that I'm learning like everything and you know as far as the connection that was a concern but then I realized there's so many people here and when you meet someone who is motivated and they're like hey you know I make music and you know I'm a producer it's a simple conversation just like hey you know do you want to work together or would you like you know someone to run your music by and you know get feedback you know and just kind of you know, making yourself available hmm. for people and, you know, just showing up and just literally being present with other people. It was very easy to have so many opportunities come my way, um, thankfully. But I think really just, you know, going to a, a very populated, saturated place where there's live music on the strip every day. Like every single day there's a band playing you know, amazing, amazing music. And, you know, if you want a gig too, you know, sometimes your first gig, my first gig was a cancellation. And they said, hey, I know for last minute, um, but there's a gig starting in an hour. Can you be there? I said, absolutely, I can be there. I was on my way, had all the gear in the car already. Um, and I was on the way. And that was my first um, opportunity um, to sing in Nashville at a gig. And I was so grateful for that. But if I wasn't available then I wouldn't have had that opportunity, you know, and mm. sometimes people are too prideful, like they won't, don't want to take a cancellation or, you know, they want people to plan stuff with them. But sometimes it's like spur of the moment opportunities that really you didn't even expect to be there. And it was like so great. And you had an awesome time and you met a lot of people who are really genuine. And yeah, so that that's been one of the challenges too, just being available mm. and being on you know, someone messages you and they're like, hey, we have an opening in an hour, making yourself available for opportunities that, you know, wouldn't have been open if, you know, you had somewhere to be or just whatever, you know, so yeah. that's been, that's been a challenge, but um, it's been really nice and it's been very refreshing just being in a new environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely love all that, and I think people can definitely take a lot of that in their own experience, too, depending on where they're at. I like what you said about um, kind of being like a drop in the pond, if you will, about being like you're in such a high-trafficked area where there's so many talented people. Um, but like you said, I think just being yourself and finding the people that relate to you and what you do, that's where it's going to come down to is like, are you going to keep going or are you going to give up things like that? And then having the perseverance of being able to do the things like you said, where you're taking these gigs last minute or, you know, you might not be ready, but I think the best time to be ready is when you're not ready. You know what I mean? And it just kind of falls right in front of you. It's like, are you going to take it or just go the other way? So I, I definitely think it just comes down to like personality and, you know, trying to figure out what you do, but, I've heard that from people that are in LA too, or New York, same thing. It's like, they might come from a small town elsewhere. They're used to being the only one in their town that does it. Then they come there and it's like overwhelming or whatever. And they have, everybody has their own experiences to like get through that and figure that out. But I think sharing that like allows people to understand that 
maybe some of the things they're feeling probably aren't just in them. You know what I mean? That other people have dealt with this stuff too in their own ways. So um, definitely thank you for sharing that and sharing your story too. I think that's super awesome. Um, is there any collaborators could be, you know, recently or even from since you moved to Nashville that you'd like to give a shout out to maybe people you've been working with recently or anyone that you want to let people know about on the show today? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've been working closely with a lot of very talented artists, producers, songwriters. Um, it would honestly, uh, be all night to go on with the people mm-hmm. that would just shout out but a couple of you know honorable mentions definitely on um, paper cheese web um he i've been working very closely with him um we just started a um talent management business and we're going to be working with all different walks of talent um, not just in the music industry but um boxers models, things like that. And we've really been pushing to just kind of create something that can provide value for people. Mm -hmm. And so that's in the, um, I've been working with, um, Skylar Gibbons. He is a audio engineer, always a very honorable mention for me. Um, we do remote work, but he is working over, um, he just moved actually, so he's in a new location, but we work remotely. And then um, Kate Cook from Top Sound Studios, we've also been working. And then people here that are physically in Nashville. Um, I recently worked with a, uh, like it's basically this program where they work with veterans and it's called Operation Song. And um, there's another uh, there's another um, program for veterans called Creative Vets, and they work together. But they gave me an opportunity to um, write a song with Will Nance, who wrote um, "She's Everything" by Brad Paisley, and so it was really cool to write music with someone who's written a couple, of, you know, more than a couple, but some really beautiful songs that are out. Um, and that gave me an opportunity to tell my story and just feel like I'm a part of the community. And so I really appreciated that, um, that they're giving veterans a space to kind of work with people Mm -hmm. and, and share their story. And so I, you know, that was really special to me. And so, you know, I really wanted to shout them out for that and a couple of the people on my team. Um, but yeah, there's more people you shout you out for giving me this (laughs) opportunity. Of course, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, Thank you. Yeah. Well, absolutely. No problem. First of all. So I appreciate that. And I definitely think that, you know, having two connections that, you know, you've been a part of with the military and with music, that's got to be super awesome to be a part of. So I definitely, that's super, super great. And, uh, talk about more about the talent agency. Cause I didn't know that myself, you know, what has that endeavor been like? Because is it something that you haven't really done before? You never thought you'd be a part of like, talk to us about the experience of doing that up to this point. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically, I started kind of just working collaborate collaborative sessions with artists, helping them write music and tell their story, um, and just doing demos for artists um, at a smaller level, just so that they have stuff to kind of put out and, and work on. Um, and then it kind of transitioned into me managing their websites. So I started building websites for artists that didn't have websites and managing it, uploading it with their new music, stuff like that. So I worked with a lot of like really cool artists who just really needed help with their online um, persona. And I manage a couple of Instagrams right now. Um, I obviously manage my own artist page and I manage my co- One of the, my college has a veteran a group called Bruin Vets. I managed their Instagram. So I kind of started doing some like social media management as far as like Instagram posting, um, things like that on my end and then for other people. And then it went further into website development, um, building websites and customizing it. And then it went a little bit into like more of like being kind of like a mentor for people um, who make music, who kind of just like need an extra step and an extra push. So the talent agency really came around um i made a i started working marketing for 432 
and um, I still work for them. They're a very great company. Um, and I met a couple of people in the company who also have their own companies. And um, from marketing, I was doing uh, social media uh, marketing for brands, small businesses, and artists, helping them get more reach, um, things like that. And so it kind of just built from just will, being willing to just kind of do anything really, like just to like stay active. And um, this opportunity came about when I met someone also working for the same company and, you know, we all have different businesses and, you know, ventures were on and it kind of came about. So it's very new, um, but we're really looking forward to, you know, we already have, you know, a boxer signed to us right now. Um, So we're kind of just trying to get this going. It's a, it's already up and running, but, you know, just putting the word out there. Um, we're interested in, you know, working with pretty much anyone who um, has a talent. Um, they can check out our website. Um, and, of course, all the other things that I've mentioned to very genuine good people to mm-hmm. have around you. But I kind of just went in from starting off doing a bunch of little things and just being open to trying out different roles in the industry not just being an audio engineer but I also do like videography photography video editing things like that I just like to stay busy and help people out I have a lot of different skills that aren't just singing and writing music and producing music so um you know building relationships with people and just connecting with people is something that I've always loved I feel like that's obviously Mm. the best part of connecting people is just having more people that you know are genuine and they're motivated and they're happy and they're on fire with life and they just want to help other people and bring value and so you know I'm pretty much willing to you know work on any little project like that or big projects like this um I don't really say no to any opportunities to kind of test myself creatively so that's how this kind of came about um and yeah I just thought it was a great opportunity um Paper Chase makes music as well he produces he went to Berkeley um for audio engineering I'm graduating next semester I'm still currently a student studying audio engineering at Belmont University in Nashville so yeah it's it's been really it's been really awesome to still be in school and then have opportunities to just work actively, like, while you're also learning. Mm -hmm. It's like interning, like, more in-depth, basically. It's just like actively doing what you love, so. Hey there, hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to take a quick minute out to let you know about a couple different ways that you can support the podcast. One of the ways is by clicking that support the podcast button within your streaming platform. That is if you want to be a monthly supporter of the show, you can contribute either $0.99, cents, $5, or $10 a month. So that's the first way, and that's the more traditional way that we've had now for the last couple years. The other method that we actually just recently introduced is from our good friends over at Coffee. Coffee is a virtual tip jar. We have set our limit to a minimum of $10, but you can go make one-time, one-off donations. So if you visit coffee.com backslash the Proven Knowledge Podcast, you'll be able to donate. And all these different forms of donation go towards getting new guests every single week, getting potential sponsors on board to do giveaways, and overall just making the show better for you guys. So if you want to do that coffee link, it's ko-fi.com backslash the Proven Knowledge Podcast. Otherwise, again, look for that support the podcast button in your streaming platform if you'd like to be a monthly supporter. And I just want to say thank you guys for your contributions. And without further ado, let's get back into the episode. I love that. I love that. Absolutely. And congratulations on it. Um, Because like you said, I think it's a great way to be able to give back and do more for the artist community as well while also still learning skills on your own actively. And it's helping you as an artist. Cause like you said, uh, building those relationships, it's like you never know who you'll meet through there. And then you might get another opportunity because of that. So 
I think a lot of artists, they still overlook that. I, I was on another podcast as a guest a couple of weeks ago. It was an entrepreneur podcast and I was being asked like, you know, why, why I didn't just do like producing and I've endeavored into the podcast and all this other stuff. And I was like, we well, kind of have to, in a way to kind of get where you're going. And, you know, if you do care about it enough and you're passionate about it, you know, you'll, you'll want to do more. Uh, and I never envisioned myself doing this stuff either. I'm sure you probably didn't at the beginning either when you first started singing and producing, but then it's like, you, the more you, yeah, exactly. The more love you have for it, you just want to keep helping people, connecting with people. Uh, and, I, and I think that's definitely, you know, something good to keep in mind for artists, especially just starting out. I think, you know, you, you want to find that one thing that gets you your foot in the door and like that you really love and you always do, but there's so many different options now to get your name out there and connect with people. So, uh, definitely always keep that in mind. So appreciate you for sharing that yeah. as well. Cause it's super important. Thank you. I was about to say, I, I started out uh, working as a stage hand at the college, just, you know, wrapping microphone cables and, you know, pushing props to and from basically, um, just to be there mm -hmm. in a live, live setting, you know, and it's, it's a small job, but you no, know, it gets you in the door and that's really all you need. And it did a lot more for me than I thought. I thought, oh, I'm just wrapping microphone cables, but, um, it really motivated me and it really, you know, it made, it helped me meet people that were, you know, singers, actors, dancers that were also in the same field in the same industry. And I had a lot of fun doing it. So, mm -hmm. you know, anything, I think, any opportunity is a good opportunity and you just never know like you know some opportunity comes your way and it might not be for exactly what you're hoping for maybe take that and it'll open another door for what you are looking for mm -hmm. um and that kind of just how it yeah just taking you got to take some risks every once in a while too so yeah absolutely uh -huh. So as far as, you know, your music and what you have planned as the new year begins, because, you know, when this comes out, we'll be about a month into the new year. Um, you know, what do you think you have planned for 2024 that we can expect? Uh, it could be music, performances, anything to do with the talent agency. Like, what do you want to reveal to people that they can expect? Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, this year, 2024, I plan on starting a podcast called wave a podcast um i know i'll be interviewing you on the podcast so i'm looking forward to having you yeah. on it i was well. gonna say we talked about it a few months ago i almost forgot about that you just refreshed yeah. my memory <laughs> absolutely uh -huh. yeah and you know, you know i was very inspired by you and how you started up and your story as well and so i've always kind of wanted i love talking and connecting with people and i've always kind of wanted to just have like a, a podcast where I could about the music industry and just interview people about their story. And, um, and that's just something I've always wanted to do. And so I'm going to just start up a, a podcast called wave a podcast. Um, I have a couple of episodes lined up. You're one of them. So, um, people can look forward to that. And of course on the music side, um, I have a lot of music that I've been making in Nashville and that I've been, focusing on and writing music and I know I've been quiet but I have a lot of stuff that I'm planning on bringing to the table and you know taking this step back from music to learn how to produce music and create my own beats and learn how to record myself I've recorded live bands start to finish set up everything and you know so those are things I haven't had a chance to do and I haven't had the opportunity and so I feel like that uh, now that I've had a chance to develop my skills um, I can bring more music and more experience to the table and like help better everyone's experience. So, um, 2024, a lot new music, a lot more music, a lot more beats produced by me, a lot of projects where I'll be engine, I'll be the engineer on the project for other artists. And of course, you know, we'll see where things go with, you know, the, um, paper chase web, um, management, in the talent um, search and yeah. And anyone who I, you know, affiliate with that has a goal, that has a dream, um, I'm automatically on the team and we're all working, helping each other out in any way. So you might see me working on projects with a lot of other artists, a lot of um, producers, you know, helping out with their projects, stuff like that. So um, just a lot more content basically. Mm -hmm. 
more, uh, um, you know, thought out plan content. Um, I know in the past things have been um, a bit more like here and there, but this time we're going to have, you know, some more professional content to bring in. I'm looking forward to that because it'll be a testament to all the hard work that I've been putting in all these years, basically. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see it all come to fruition for sure. And you got me re-excited because I I did forget about that. We we had that whole discussion and uh, yeah, I'm I'm ready when you are for that because that's going to be super awesome and um, to see the show and uh, to eventually hear the show as well and all the new music. It's going to be super awesome. So definitely looking forward to that. Um, and we are down to the last few questions here. These are ones I ask on every episode. The first one is if you could go back 10 years ago, maybe give yourself a piece of advice or maybe not change anything at all, what do you think you would do? Um, thank you for that question because I don't think I can say the real thing that I would do just because um, everyone has a different journey and I don't want to influence anyone's path, um, especially young young people because you know I'm 25 so 10 years ago for me would have been when I was 15 and you know I at 15 years old I was auditioning for um, America's Got Talent in Louisiana my dad drove me over there to audition and uh, after I didn't make the show uh, I kind of was deflated a little bit and I felt like that meant that I wasn't talented because they didn't recognize it and I want I would say for anyone what I can share is that you know never stop believing in yourself. No one is going to understand how important something is for you, but yourself, Mm -hmm. you know, and very important to advocate for yourself, to be realistic with yourself and to push your own dream forward. And I went to college for personal training. I did nine months in an accelerated peace course at Kaiser university. And it was great. And it was really something that I could have did, but I would have been, denying my own passion and giving up on my dream and you only have one life and it sounds very cliche but you know I'm willing to move across the country for you know what I believe in and what I want to accomplish in life and I I wish that then I would have had the same mindset Mm -hmm. but I think everyone's on their own and that's definitely one thing that I would have done yeah love that and if we flip it then and we say 10 years from now, where do you think you envision yourself in music, life in general? Where do you see yourself? In 10 years from now? Yep. Uh, I definitely see myself uh, operating a studio, my own studio, music studio. That's something that I'm really um, hoping and working towards actively to do. I want to work as a music producer and I want to help write music for other artists and just do a lot of different things in the industry. And hopefully by then, um, I will have done all of that Mm. hopefully before. So that's what I would like to see in 10 years from now. And of course my music as well in Mm. there, but you know, of course that'll come in time, but as far as, you know, a career and something I'm really looking forward to, I would say, you know, professionally singing my music, but also I would like to help other people with my talent that I was given. And I've done vocal coaching. I was a vocal coach for a couple of clients. I did free vocal coaching in June just to see how it would go. And I really loved it. And um, I helped a couple of clients um, improve with their vocal goals. And, you know, I just really love helping other people. So I would really have liked to have helped a lot of people along the way. And, you know, even if I don't like, you know, open a studio or things change, I would like to have at least have done that. Yeah. At least. And there's always, like we said earlier, there's so many ways to help people nowadays too. So sky's kind of the limit on that one. So super awesome. And do you have any final words of wisdom for the listeners today? I know you just dropped some great wisdom just now, but yeah. you know anything else you want to add before we get out of here? Wow. Yeah, let me think. Cuz you never know who's listening and like what they need what they need to hear. So, let me just 
think for a second and see kind of what's coming to me. Maybe it'll be something that somebody's needing. Um, well, I definitely want to reiterate, you know, just not giving up and always believing in your dream and always keeping your flame alive, even if they're embers, you know, sometimes, you know, you try to put a campfire out and you pour water on it and it doesn't go out, you know, be the campfire that like no one can put out. Like they dump a bucket of water on you and you're still like the embers. There's still hot coals and they're sizzling. They're still on fire and, you know, just fan yourself because it can get very draining going on social media, looking at what other people are doing and you'd be surprised um, what the truth might really be. So try to just focus on yourself and remain grateful and remain grateful for where you're at and just know that nothing is temporary mm-hmm. and you can, you can change who you are if you want. And it's never too late. It's never too late. There was someone who was 50 years old going to college. I'm, I'm 25, I'm 26 now, but I started college again at 25 and there's a lot of people who, you know, might think it's too late to go to school or it's too late to, you know, take a, a guitar lesson. And I would just say it's never too late. Um, that's always something that I've been using to help me, you know, stay motivated and not lose motivation and, and self-discipline is, you know, it's never too late to be happy and to, and to do what you really want. And I think that some people... They feel like it's too late, that there's people that are miles ahead of them. Like, they already did this. They did that. They did that. Well, you know, I've created my own positions, positions that don't even exist in companies. I've went to a company and said, I know you don't have this position available, but this is what I bring to the table. And if what I'm offering you fits you, then I would love to work for you. And they've said, absolutely. And I've created my own position. So, you know, just just always be focusing on how you can progress forward and don't give up when people say no. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in Nashville for a year and I didn't get one gig in a whole year. And I thought, wow, I'm going to like go to school, have this whole experience and not have one opportunity to have a gig. And one day I got called for that cancellation gig. And then it turned into a song. And then that gig turned into a songwriting round where I did my first writer's round with four other artists and then that turned into singing the national anthem for a basketball game you know for over a thousand people at the school and you know it might seem little like I was singing you know small gigs at Beef O'Brady's getting paid hourly to sing cover songs you know you're never you're never too good to accept money or to or to sing at a place if it's an opportunity that you didn't have before. And mm-hmm. I think every opportunity, because some people like they do blow up overnight, but some people, you know, it's singing at local restaurants and then, you know, continuing your journey. And now look at where I'm at now. Like I never thought in a million years I would be in Nashville or I would, I would be in school for audio engineering. It was definitely a thought. It was definitely a dream, but it just didn't seem like it was something that I could actually achieve in real life. And so, you know, like it, it always seems like it feels different. Like you think that you're going to like feel different. Like, and sometimes people, they achieve their wildest dreams and then they still feel like, you know, so the grass isn't greener on the other side mm-hmm. sometimes, but like, you really have to wake up and say, this is what I'm working with. And this isn't forever. And, you know, things will pan out in the end because it's not the end yet, you know? So, you know, people that didn't even go to college, you know, Bill Gates, you know, started companies at 30 and whatnot. And, you know, they became very successful and, you know, whatever your definition of success is or whatever makes you happy, follow that. Cause for everyone, it's different for me. It's not really that the, the monetary part It's really just, other things like personal experience and human capital for me that's just really what I'm after at this point in my life Mm -hmm. yeah money will be great but everything kind of follows you know so yeah I don't know how many pieces of advice that was but I think it was definitely more than one so hopefully one of those helped somebody out there yeah I was gonna say I got nothing to add to that because that was that was inspiring to me so that was great 
appreciate it so much. And like I said, thank you once again for doing this. I know we talked about it for a while and we'll have to do it again soon. And obviously on your Absolutely. podcast and, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Um, cause I'm, I'm a fan of your work too. And, you know, we'll, we'll be in touch and we'll stay connected. So I appreciate it once again, as always. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate your time and having me and I'm looking forward to speaking to you again in the future and definitely mm-hmm. having you on the podcast. So thank you. Thanks everyone for listening today. That was episode 190. We'll be back this time next week. As always, hit the support button on your podcast streaming platform if you'd like to send any funds. And feel free to leave us that five-star rating if you enjoyed today's episode. So we'll see you then. Thanks, everyone.